So in today's gospel, we see Jesus doing something which we might consider somewhat surprising. Uh, he takes a bit of a cord and he starts thrashing the place, really. I mean, he gets, he gets a bit irate. Uh, there he is in the, in the temple and there's a lot of trading going on. We can imagine, you see, um, just for a bit of historical background, it says just before the Jewish Passover. So uh, synagogues were dotted all around the various towns and cities where Jews lived, but synagogues were for preaching and teaching. Okay, The only place, the only place that Jews offered sacrifice was the temple in Jerusalem. So no matter where you were from in the Holy Land, it's not like you could go and offer your, you know, your, your sacrifice lamb uh, for the Passover in your local synagogue. Like We go to Mass, we can go to Mass here, we can go to Mass in Holy Cross or Kilshilin or, or wherever. Uh, we don't have to all go to Mass in St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. Whereas for them, the only place you could go to Mass, the equivalent of, is St. Peter's in Rome. You know what I mean? Like the central church. Everything else, they're just for preaching and teaching. So when it came to a Passover... There were an awful lot of people, okay? So all of the Jews had to come from all around the Holy Land to sacrifice their, their lambs there. So we can imagine then, from a commercial expect, uh, perspective, you know, if they all need lambs. So your lamb sellers are, you know, it's kind of like being a turkey seller around Christmas kind of thing. It's uh, everyone, everyone's looking for a lamb. Uh, and everyone's looking for all the, you know, food, accommodation, um, knock, rock. All of those kind of things, you know what I mean? Like all these kind of things that we associate with certain places of pilgrimage, you know? Everyone's kind of getting, getting in on the act because it's all happening there. So unfortunately, this also spilled into, into the temple, right? Into the, the, these places reserved for God. And this is, this is a good thing. As, as, as it's a good thing that we have places reserved for God. Um, even traditionally, the way a church was built, uh, it, it's good that where the altar is or where the tabernacle is, it looks different. It looks separate to the rest of the church. It's in the church, absolutely, but there's something distinct about it. Why? To keep people away? No. Is it because that's the territory of the priests? No. Uh, it's God's territory. It's God's sanctuary. So the Holy of Holies, right, should look different, right? If we had an arrange of different shelves here and in one of them was the tabernacle, you know, that's not good enough. Like, it should be absolutely crystal clear. There's a tabernacle, bang, in the center, Okay? And then the place around it is reserved, you know, so yeah, it's, a, it's only a small little thing, you can't see it at home. In our church here we've got kind of carpeted sections where the, where the people are, and this place is tiled. So it's just, it's different, it's just, it kind of, traditionally there would have been altar rails, you know. So again, it's, that's where, that's our, the equivalent of the Holy of Holies. So it's good to have this sense of the sacred, and the sense of a, a place reserved for God. He deserves at least that. Okay, so this festival season uh, had a, encouraged a lot of uh, traders to come and do their, do their bits and pieces to make their, make their few bob over the Passover season. But that cannot be what our, our faith is about. That cannot be what Passover is about. You know, what, what was the Passover about? Pas Passover was about remembering the miraculous, uh, life-saving deeds, miracles, prodigies that, that God bestowed, gifted to his people in Egypt to free them from sin and how each one of them, each family was saved by the blood of the lamb. Each family was saved by the blood of the lamb. So it's, it's about freedom. And also like for Jews, uh, Egypt was always synonymous. Egypt and Babylon were always synonymous with uh, a life of sin. You know what I mean? So going back to slavery, the slavery of sin, the slavery of, of Egypt, the slavery of, of, of Babylon, this kind of a, a idea also that God isn't just freeing them, like putting them, them in a better place, but he's freeing them from captivity, freeing them from sin, freeing them from a life <clears throat> that wasn't God-centered. And often these exiles were ways of turning the hearts of his people back towards him. So all of this is, is brought together <clears throat> in a moment like this, where Jesus now sees the temple reduced to something that, that it's not. It's not about making money. It's not about trading. It's about turning our hearts back to God. It's the, it's, it's the purpose of the church, right? Uh, but in the season of Advent, what I wanted to focus on today is that conversion, conversion isn't, <clears throat> it's not a moment. We, we do hear 
conversion stories where it all happens in one moment. You've got your, your St. Paul moments, you know. Uh, you, okay, it doesn't actually say in scripture that he fell off a horse, but traditionally we understand that he fell off a horse. Scripture doesn't mention a horse. But we fell off his horse, sees God, and has this, this major conversion while he's on the way to actually persecute Christians, okay? So there are some conversion experiences like that. But for most of us, conversion isn't a moment. Conversion is a process, right? So conversion, you can have wonderful experiences maybe in, in Medjugorje or wherever. <clears throat> you have a conversion experience, yes. But generally speaking, conversion isn't a moment. It's a process. Dare I say, it's actually a lifelong process and we all like the the shortcuts we all like the kind of the, the the if we can at all to try and make this a bit easier or is there is there is there a plenary indulgence that I can get instead or uh, is there anything else I can do you know rather than actually have to change my life rather than actually convert <clears throat> so this is what the, the the heart of this Lenten season is about turning our hearts back to God and it's a process and as we've said in, in previous weeks as well, more than likely, we don't get our Lenten resolutions right the whole way. Uh, maybe you've fallen off the wagon and had a sly, fun-sized Mars bar at some stage, squeezed one in to a ham sandwich when no one was looking. Uh, but, you know, so, like, or maybe there was, you know, you, you want to dedicate more time to prayer and it hasn't happened, or it happened a few times for the first couple of days and then you fell off the wagon, or to repair a relationship with someone, or whatever it may be, avoiding a certain TV program, <clears throat> turning off the phone earlier at night, whatever. <clears throat> so we don't always get these things right, but that, that by no means means that we should stop, start again. Process isn't, the, the conversion isn't, a, isn't an event, it's a process. It's a process. A process of turning our hearts back to God. So when we see the gospel today, is Jesus losing control? Has Jesus kind of lost control of himself, lost the run of himself, and he's just kind of <coughs> letting fly, <coughs> as we'd say. He's just uh, giving voice to his anger or rage or something. Not at all. Not at all. Jesus never lost control. He never lost control of himself. But... The temple did need, did need purification. And so when we think of our own hearts, our own lives, our own way of, of praying, our own way of, of including God in our lives, what needs purification? You know, what needs to be converted? What needs to be turned back to God? I was talking to a, a friend recently <clears throat> who had had the desire to to become a saint, you know, really wanted to become a saint. And that was fine. And a week later, uh, she contacted me saying, this is, this is too hard, I can't do this. This is impossible. And like, just very simply, I said, yeah, but becoming a saint, you see, while we would like to, to think all I have to do is decide for it. And then that's it, we're there you know, cut a few bad habits out of my life, and then we're good to go. Uh, but it's a, a lifelong process. That's our call. The Second Vatican Council was very clear about the fact that all of us have a call to sanctity. There's a universal call to sanctity, a universal call to holiness. All of us, all of us called to holiness. But it doesn't, it just doesn't happen like that. The decision, the decision is absolutely necessary, and there will be a, maybe a beginning, a, a starting point for, for your conversion. You know, I, I, I met someone or I had a, went to a retreat or I went on a pilgrimage and I, 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 then I realized I have to change my life. Great. It can have a starting point, a clear starting point, yes. But the whole process, that's, that's lifelong. That's lifelong. So the Lord purifies the temple. And then interestingly, he says something which uh, they couldn't have understood. Destroyed this sanctuary and in three days I will raise it up. How on earth were they, were they supposed to know he was talking about him? They couldn't, they couldn't have known that. But they didn't need to know. This was going to happen. The passion was going to happen. At this point, there was no, there was no turning back. Uh, this was going to happen. And then these are the kind of things then that his disciples and apostles retell afterwards and see how, how scripture is all brought together. <clears throat> 
So, as we hear this gospel, this is the Lord reminding us of how serious our faith is and how serious this time of conversion is. It's absolutely joyful as well. I mean, our faith is joyful and it's life-giving and it's hope-giving. But there's a serious side to it as well. Often when we think of the Lord, we have him kind of reduced to a, a, a caricature of, of himself, you know, where he's just a sheep finder and healer and a bit of a preacher, teacher, philosopher, whatever you want to call him. But we forget, there's, there's, we may forget, there's a very serious side to all of this as well. Our conversion is necessary for our salvation. Our conversion is necessary for heaven. Our acceptance of God's mercy is necessary for us to be able to stand in his presence in heaven. So our faith is beautiful. It's life-giving. <clears throat> but there's a, quite a serious side to it as well. And so we ask the Lord today to renew our hearts and minds that in this season of Lent, our hearts may be pruned prepared to love him in a whole new way to love him with all of our hearts to love him with so many of those obstacles that are standing between our heart and his removed we ask you lord to renew our faith renew our hope and renew our love amen